Gemini, you're here. Welcome to Starkeology Tarot. I am Desi. I will be your Starkeologist this lovely afternoon slash whenever you are finding this reading. It's the right time for you to find it. Um, this is your June reading. This is good for Gemini, Sun, Rising, uh, Moon, Venus. I encourage you to watch other videos for those placements for you. Also, cross-watch for someone that you love. What's their sign? If you want to know what's going on with them in June, how you can, um, what you can expect with your relationship and how you can best support them and navigate your relationship with them, feel free to watch their video. Guys, there's no, there's no rules on this. Um, go for it. I'm so happy to be connecting you with spirit today, delivering messages um, that are meant for, meant for you. <laughs> um, there will be things that resonate with you. Don't be, don't freak out if uh, something doesn't resonate for you. It's meant for some other Gemini. Um, so uh, graciously let them have it. <laughs> um, my intention here is to deliver to you uh, the message for June that will best help you and align you with your highest self and your highest good. If you have additional intentions, a question that you want um, to ask at this time, set that intention now as we shuffle and tune in. Uh, and let's not waste another second talking. Let's do this, Gemini. Gemini, did you see me kind of freak out at the end of that shuffle there? And by freak out, I just mean slowly turn to the camera and stare you down for a moment because um, Spirit is very insistent about your about the June message for you. There is something that you are feeling very confused about, and I put confused in quotes because I feel like it's almost a a, a sort of self-delusion as a way of self-protection, self-defense, something that you are putting off solving um, or, or making more confusing and chaotic than it needs to be because you know that there's something about what is right for you in that, what is true for you in that, that will lead to real conflict here. This is when I, both of these were pulled together um, for how your June where your June ends up, it's it's a double five of wands, which is kind of insane. Um, you know that there is there is conflict, there is conflict in in. It's almost like your fear or your need of avoiding future conflict is. Um, you're solving that problem by creating enough conflict in yourself right now to put off this future conflict. Like, you can deal... <laughs> you're creating more conflict um, in the face of future conflict. Which is such a funny and, I think, backwards way of, of avoiding conflict. It's like you think you're avoiding this conflict, but really you're just creating more conflict for yourself. Um, in the in the resistance of this conflict um, and I think that this could be an inner conflict that is coming up for you um, or it could be a conflict with someone else like you know that if you make a decision you're going to upset some people that you really care about um, you're gonna disappoint some people you don't want to disappoint those people you don't want you're a real um, people pleaser and normally what though normally because you are so people oriented um, you love con conversation you love that honest conversation you love honest connection there's something about this some topic in your life which we will get to in a moment that is making this conversation that needs to be had um, a true rarity in your life because it's a conversation you don't want to have um, also the numerology here, double fives, um, 
We got a sh 55, sh 55. Um, I would love, I'm still learning a lot about numerology, but anyone in the comments, if you know, if you know a thing or two about um, numbers and their magic powers, please feel free to leave a, a comment because I'm, I'm curious um, about that double five. Um, so I think that for many of you, this conflict is actually, so we see the confusion here. We see the chaos and confusion, emotional confusion that you're really, you're going through right now. You feel there, there is a world of possibility in front of you and your way of working through what is a logical thing for you to do or what is the right thing to do or what is the thing that feels um, like the emotionally aligned place for you, the direction that your heart is aligned with, um, it's hard for you to discern that because I think that there is a secret that your heart has that your mind doesn't want to face maybe. So your mind just creates more options in the face of the options you already have. Your mind sees all these options and, and responds to it by, by creating more options just to extend the chaos and confusion of the options. <laughs> um, again, I'm just really hearing, I'm just hearing avoidance here. There's a real avoidance, I think, of conflict. Um, but this card comes up when the, so many of these choices are not real. There is, there's a, a definite um, line between real and fantasy, and you need your feelings in order to help you find that line and, and discern what is real and what is fantasy, what is just appearance and versus reality. Um, you have to go by instinct, and you can't go by instinct if if you're letting every single feeling that you feel lead you to a conclusion. Feelings are clues, no doubt. But the mind, sometimes when they are filtered through the lens of our mind, um, things can get more confusing than helpful because the mind sometimes wants to assign meaning and purpose to every single feeling that we have. Um, Or the mind has a way of fooling us about what feelings mean if the mind doesn't like a truth that the, that the heart is trying to raise. So the mind has a, has, it can be really tricky. We can be very smart <laughs> in how we um, interpret our feelings sometimes not to our best interest. I'm seeing that for you, for many of you right now, and this for some of you, this specifically has to do with how you are taking care of yourself, with your own personal power, how you are creating um, abundance in your life, um, how you are being this, this queen of pentacles and creating a stable and reliable, um, simple life, but also one of abundance. I mean, one that, that is like, you're wealthy in all the right ways. All of your basic needs are being met. And I think for some of you, you have basic needs that are not being met right now um, in a very real way, whether that is you don't have a job or you don't have the money to pay for this or you don't have a place to live right now. And um, there, that feels almost like a bigger problem than it is. It feels like you're waiting for this authority figure to step into your life to figure that all of that out for you because because the options for how you go about doing that yourself are too overwhelming. It seems like too big of a job. It seems like a job for a queen. The problem here is that you, it's not a problem. <laughs> the universe is calling for you to step in to this queen role. The universe is calling for you to step up and take control. And a good queen, a good ruler is able to hear, to be faced with all of these choices, all of these options, and by instinct and re the resources that she has, rule out what she knows is not going to work for her, rather than accumulating them almost like um, hoarding ideas, hoarding uh, feelings. 
being afraid to let go of any particular one for fear, oh, what if I let go of that one and that's the one that I need? Um, it's almost like an emotional, yeah, like I'm hearing an emotional hoarding is happening. Um, I think that while many of you, for many of you, this is about how you take care of yourself, for some of you, this is an actual person in your life who maybe is nurturing you right now, who's really taking good care of you. Um, it's someone who is cooking for you. Um, I, I, I think many of you may be with spending time with a, a maternal figure right now. Others, it might be a partner or someone or a friend who is kind of taking you under their wing in some way. And it could be simply an emotional way, a sort of emotional support, but it also could be a very physical way, uh, giving you a room to stay in until you can get back on your feet or has loaned you money or is, is doing you a favor in some sort of um, job situation, financial situation. Um, someone who is nurturing you in very, in very tangible, physical, concrete ways. Um, and I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from. I think this is important for some of you. Um, there is something about this that is confusing because it's very nice and it's what you need right now, but you're letting the, the state of the present moment with this person and with this person's influence affect how you're seeing your future. Um, it's affecting the choices that you see possible before you, the potential that you see before you. And I think that goes both ways. For some of you, it's making you think that there is some fantasy life that is possible, um, maybe involving this person that is really actually not possible and, and not even what it is you necessarily want. We're gonna get to this in a minute, but not even aligned with what your goals are and what your dreams are. But it, there's a, such a comfort to it that it's seductive and you're like, yeah, maybe that's the life that I want or that's the choice that I want to make. And this person's this this person is 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 selling me on it in a way. Um, I feel so taken care of, um, you know, I feel so taken care of by her or him. But this is a very feminine maternal energy um, that the idea the ideas or possibilities associated with this person are equally, you're kind of like, um, what is that? Attaching meaning to, to the ideas, like displacing the feeling that you feel with this person into the ideas that are connected with them. And making assumptions like, oh, well, if I go in this direction, it feels similar to this, so I expect to keep feeling this way, when really that could be fantastical in some sort of way. It could be a little bit, um, a little bit uh, of an illusion. Um, there's also, like, I'm hearing, like, this a dependency maybe on this person, on this Queen of Pentacles in your life, um, that is affecting... The, uh, the the potentials and options you see, sorry, like so many downloads are coming in right now, it's hard to keep up. I realize I cut myself off. It going both ways before, meaning like fantasies, you're thinking about fantasies that can't be real, but also it's going the other way too. And I just wanna cover that, where something about the, this person's influence, um, the comfort that you're feeling with this person is actually making your realm of possibility um, limited. So all of these options are things that are mostly, might be too practical for some of you, or might be um, not aligned with your real goals, but you're trying so hard under this very practical, um, nurturing influence, you're thinking by this person's logic and through you're seeing the world through this person's perception of the world rather than your own. And that is affecting your decision making and your choices. And it feels confusing because these feelings are not actually coming from you. They're coming from this person. So you feel unclear and you feel confused and you're like, what's my gut instinct on this? 
because your real feelings are being clouded by this person's feelings that you are taking in because you highly respect this person and their influence and because the way that they make you feel might be so good might be so comforting that it's that in itself is an incredibly persuasive force um yeah so for some of you this is this is largely about an actual influence in your life or this is about you being this influence of how you move forward how you take care of yourself how you provide this self-care how for yourself how you nourish yourself and there's too many there's so much confusion over that there's so much confusion over how to to um take control of these of these certain self-care meeting basic needs nourishment section of your life in in jobs in home life in money matters um moving um dealing with certain expenses schooling um legal matters i'm hearing legal matters for some of you um And it's affecting your instinct. It's affecting your instinct. You're really overwhelmed by a lot of feelings and some of these feelings are, are confusing and they're melding with thoughts that you're having. Thoughts are creating some of your feelings. That's, an, that's another very important thing here. Thoughts that you're thinking that might be coming from this very um, logical, practical source, resource, um, are informing your feelings and it should be the other way around your feelings should inform your thoughts some of you are thinking a little are, 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 are experiencing this getting this information from your inner self a little backwards um, and that is what's causing the, the blurred line between what's real what's fantasy and making this so confusing for you right now so confusing for you moving forward um, Also, because this is the Queen of Pentacles, this isn't the King of Pentacles. This is not about taking a very structured approach to your authority over these matters in your life. This is about taking an intuitive approach in your, um, in how you get these things, these areas of your life under control. It's it's Queen, so this is a this is a a very feminine energy card. This is this is about. This is an aspect card of the Empress. This is power through your intuition, power through feeling, um, power through the creative, feminine, uh, free-flowing energy, not the structured um, pipeline of this is how, these are the boxes that we go, that we check off one by one to, to have all of my basic needs met or to feel these abundance in these areas of my life. Um, this is very much about getting in touch with your intuition in a very real concrete way. Seeing how let seeing how your intuition informs your choices, how that manifests in the real world rewards that you get and and the real world um, things that you manifest. So, okay. Hopefully you know at this point what this is referring to in your life. Um, comment below, tell me what it's about, I'm curious. This, the way that you work through this, and get over the fear of the conflict of whatever this choice is going to make, whatever the, the distillation of these choices, when you're able to look at these choices and be like, oh, I'm able to, I have the tools to narrow these down to the, the, the right choice that feels right in my heart and what feels intuitively correct to me. You, you are able to do this, but there is something about this future conflict or um, feeling of conflict, yeah, that is keeping you from doing that. I also see this, this conflict, these five of wands here in, in our outcome position as just being a potential outcome. If it's not the fear of conflict that is keep it, that is participating a participant in holding you in this confused chaotic place um, 
then these five of wands could actually just mean a potential future of what will happen if you stay in this place and you make decisions either according to this person's influence um, and it's in direct opposition to wants, to your soul purpose, to what you know is actually putting you on the path to getting closer to what you want. So that is the conflict that you are sensing a kind of on a soul internal level. Um, or there's something about aligning what you know is good for yourself. Take Doing self-care, a boundary that needs to be set that you are worried might, might somehow keep you from from doing what it is you need to do with your life from like some sort like somehow like I'm, I'm hearing some of you are afraid that if you set this boundary you're not going to be free to to go where you need to go you're not going to be free to pursue what it is that you need to pursue um, you're not going to be free to go after something that you want, something that you feel is calling to your soul. A soul calling. And I think here, again, that is a false, that's a false belief. And acting from a place of that fear is not, is not a valid resource to help you in your decision making. And the reason I say that is because the judgment card here paired with the two of wands this is really i mean the way that you that you need to approach this um this conflict that you're having is by by examining yourself and your choices truly honestly this is a look into the past almost like taking stock seeing the choices that you've made in the past and measuring them up against the seeds that you've planted, the seeds of desire that you've planted. Um, measuring them, them up against that dream that you hold in your hands about that world that you want to manifest for yourself and seeing if those choices, how those choices have brought you closer to this how those choices have kept you from this. Um, because many of you are still in this manifestation stage. You have the, the desire has been set aflame inside you, um, but you're still waiting for your ships to come in. You're still standing in the portal of possibility standing in this doorway like here is my dream on the other side of this doorway and here's my old life and there's something that's keeping you from taking a step through the doorway so you're just one foot in and one foot out you have yet to see this dream manifest you're just you're very much in the daydreaming stages of it very much in the visualization of it um, which is such an important stage. But I'm, see, I'm hearing that it's like you're always going to be stuck here if you don't look back at your life honestly and really assess the things that you've done that have supported this and the, th the choices you've made that have not supported it. Because... And again, I'm, I'm just sorry, you guys, I'm getting such like a strong feeling of like denial um, for a lot of you, like some sort of like, like just putting off like a procrastination of I don't want to do this. I don't want to look at I don't want to examine myself. Um, I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, for many of you, but I'm feeling very strongly that that is not, that's nothing to be afraid of examining yourself closely assessing yourself closely and it could be just a fear of being wrong of like looking at yourself and looking at your failures and being like i don't want to face my failures we've all had so many so many failures <laughs> um and assessing failures reflecting on failures is such an important part of success it's a crucial part of success i don't think anyone is, is successful without assessing failure 
without um, examining their failures and really owning their failures. If you divorce yourself from your, your failures, failures, you divorce yourself from success. You can't really have one without the other. This is a two, and I'm really feeling the duality of that right now. Um, so this is like, this judgment card, this is really about judging yourself with with truly kind eyes, being being kind and loving. And part of being kind and loving sometimes is giving yourself empathy where you need empathy and also giving your, knowing when to give yourself the tough love that you need. Um, regardless, both of those things are love. Remember that. Both of those things are rooted in love. There is an important change needed in order for you to step through this door, to step through this portal, and start manifesting what it is that you want. Further yourself on the path towards what you want. And this change needs to happen in order for you to do that. But you're prepared at this point to do it. You're really prepared. You're prepared to, to look back at your past self um, so that you can move into the future, continuing to make the choices that have helped you and no longer making the choices that haven't. You need to look at these past choices and assess them, pass judgment on them, so that you can see what aligns with this, what aligns with this dream, what aligns with what it, what is calling you, the dream that is calling you, the sole purpose that you feel in your bones. Um, this will help clarify which of these choices are coming from you and which are coming from maybe someone else or some other influence. And which, which of these choices will put you, will help you step into the authority, into the throne of being the self, the authority on your self-care, the authority on these, these matters in your life that you need to be in charge of in order to really take care of yourself. So don't be afraid to do this, Gemini. This is what's important to remember here. You're, you're so you're full of possibilities. You have so much, so so much, so many choices. Um, but deep down, you know the ones that will align you with this. And when you're trying to determine what is a real feeling, what is a feeling that's based in reality versus what is a fantasy, what is an illusion versus what is a, a dream, the differences between dreams and illusion. Um, some dreams can be illusions, but not all dreams are illusions. Many of you are having dreams that don't, that aren't manifested in the present moment, but they're still glimpses of yourself on another timeline. They're glimpses of your future self. They're things that you've already chosen. And don't weaken them by just saying, oh, well, it doesn't exist now, so it's never going to exist. You know what is aligned with this. You know what feels light, what feels good and aligned with you. And that would need, that's what needs to, to inform your assessment of yourself, of how you are going along this path, and of the choices that you have in front of you. It's great to have people who take care of us. It's great to be concerned with caring for ourselves in these very practical matters. But part of caring for ourselves in these practical matters means honoring this thing that can't always be measured by tangible metrics. It means honoring the spiritual side of ourselves, which is very much, for many of us, still extremely mysterious. And though logic can't always explain this, your heart can always feel what is right and what is wrong, even if you're not able to think your way through what is right and what is wrong. So be sure to use that in your decision making and in your judgment too of yourself, of your past, of your current situation. Um, future conflict is no reason to avoid doing something. 
And for many of you, it's only the fear of conflict that is keeping you from moving forward. So don't let that be a roadblock either. Gemini, I hope this was helpful. Um, you have a lot going on right now. A lot, a lot of, a lot of complexity here. And um, I think when we're working through this many layers of, uh, of things, <laughs> um, of emotion, of feelings, of thoughts, um, these times often offer the greatest potential for positive change. So don't waste this time. It's, it's sacred, just as every moment is. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, feel free to share this channel with anyone who you think needs a little extra encouragement support right now. That is why I'm doing this. That is why I am here. I am devoted to you. And I'm so, so, so grateful um, for your presence here and for your connection. I can feel it. And I love you. Thank you. Have a happy June, Gemini. Goodbye.